Hello and welcome to episode 29 of I Will Cast Anything. We're on Entombed Valley for a PvP. The red Protoss player spawning in the bottom left hand corner is Scapegoat. He's a platinum level player. He sent me this replay. This is the uh, second of a pack of five that he sent me. And the blue Protoss player in the bottom right hand corner is LL Beaner. So last game we saw Scapegoat playing against a Zerg player. Went for a, a forward fast expand and uh, stayed pretty consistently ahead for most of the game, but not a quick, easy win by any means. So we'll see how he does in the mirror matchup. Earlier scouts coming out from the blue Protoss player, but build orders identical apart from that. Although, even this small difference of sending a scout out early will produce big deviations in just a short space of time because Scapegoat will be slightly ahead on cash through having that extra mining capacity and will therefore be able to be slightly ahead in work account eventually but Beaner getting down his uh, gateway a slight little bit before his opponent so this probe scout not making that much difference just yet but in time in time here comes the probe scout from scapegoat both players scouting top positions, top close position first, and so both players will be taking a very long time to get around to where they're going. Ah, now we see a proper deviation. Early gas from scapegoat. Well, two probes will pass. Not a point of passage that lets either player really figure out where the other player is unless they're really clever with their timings. And those gateways finishing up for both players, and the cybernetic scores coming down. And with gas taken at nearly exactly the same time, I'd expect we'd see warp gate research finishing at the same time for both players as well. Both players also dumping that chrono boost into the nexus. Although we might see them start to save it up soon to put it into that warp gate research. Here's the probe scout for LL Beaner, comes in, sees normal gas timings, sees a gateway and a cyber core going down, knows. But nothing exciting is going on, and upon seeing that, LL Beaner is taking a second gas here and starring that warp gate research straight away. Scapegoat finishes up his cyber core and starts warp gate research too. And Scapegoat also getting out a stalker nice and early to make sure nothing up towards happens. And LL Beaner is sending a zealot across the map at the moment, it looks like. Oh, and adding on couple of gateways so going up to three gate for any sort of expansion here's that zealot for scapegoat we might see some zealot on zealot action here but scapegoat's got a stalker on the way as well so I think LL Bean's oh no LLB manages to run by looks like scapegoat didn't notice the zealot coming across and we could see some worker kills here Probes get a good surround. There's one kill for the Zealot. There's two. Nearly dead. Three kills. Can I get a fourth? No. Three workers killed by that one Zealot harass. The scapegoat will be a little bit unhappy about that. Going up to four gates is LL Beaner. We could see some early pressure here. Scapegoat's only just laid down his next two gateways, but he's also getting a robo. This sentry is headed out onto the map on its own and been taken down. Bit of a mistake there. Looks like that probe will survive, but now that sentry was out of place, these two stalkers have been able to get into the base because there was no force fields to be had. And kiting around this zealot, I'll take it out. One more shot. But here come those warp ins. Warp gate research has finished. Two stalkers come in. And El Albino will be able to clean this up. But losing two sentries early on is bad news. See, Scapegoat has his sentry just sitting here, waiting for the opportune moment. And now we see a push. We saw all those gateways go down. Got to do something with them. So, four stalkers heading out across the map and another one behind it. Scapegoat getting that immortal as fast as possible to try and hold off this push has not a huge amount of energy. 50 energy for a force field, so has one force field here, might have a second by the time 
The first one is done. Oh, doesn't have to use one there. Shows enough stalkers to push this force back. But here goes an advanced pylon for Beaner. Definitely some early aggression planned here. Doesn't want to let his opponent expand. Wants to get on the front foot. But that immortal is on its way and that will make a big difference. Three sentries heading across the map now for Beaner. So total map control for the blue the Protoss player right now. But we see the Immortals starting to come out for Scapegoat. Going to be up to two Immortals. Three Zealots, four Stalkers in a Sentry with half energy. Ought to be able to hold this off. More and more Immortals coming. You're not getting up here, says Scapegoat. Well, we will see about that. This is some very aggressive four gay play from Beaner but not pushing in just yet allowing his opponent time to get up to three immortals here and a lot of zealots six zealots there oh, left health bars on this whole time and now getting that robo bait to get some upgrades on that, those immortals I think scapegoat has a big enough force to hold this off now also getting an observer out and Beaner only just getting his robo might think about expanding now yep plopping down that expansion but oh, the scout zealot went down and fights a few zealots up into the base but not able to kill any of them will beaner push now or just hold here until the expansion is complete the observer is out to keep tabs on this army i think scapegoat is happy that he has the forces to repel any attack should this small force try and push up into his base so he's going to try and tech up for the moment Maybe try to hit the timing to push out and break this contain and escape ban because he's going to be uh, behind on bases in not too long. Scapegoat going straight for Colossus. Now, maybe that's what will uh, trigger the push out and the break out from this base. But Warp Prism, so more aggression going from LL Beaner. Setting down that forge to get some upgrades. And getting a Warp Prism out of this robo to potentially try and drop into the back Evandra <laughs> I'm not quite sure how we got to Rocky but okay okay scapegoat about to have that first Colossus will this trigger the push out warps in one last zealot and now chrono boost to get a second Colossus and not wanting to push out yet oh gonna move this Colossus right up to the top of the ramp, and here we go. This should be pretty straightforward, yeah. LL Beaner sees that Colossus, sees three Immortals, and immediately turns tail. Pylon has been taken out. And now Scapegoat is free to take that second. And also take map control with this Colossus. Beaners are worried about a counterattack here, warping in some more Zealots. Oh, I was at the warp prism. I didn't notice this fly across, but there are four zealots in this base now. The probes have run away. I don't think they're going to get this nexus. This army is going to get back here just in time. Take out the warp prism first. Very clever. So no pickups can happen. And those zealots go down and not a successful harass, particularly from Beaner. Did manage to disrupt mining for a short space of time. Nothing too spectacular. Laying down some defensive cannons at this third base now. Sorry, the second base. And waiting for this counterattack that I'm sure he suspects is coming. Given that he went for that early 4-gate pressure and it didn't pay off, he's now heavily behind. See a 20 supply disadvantage here. Trying to get more immortals out, trying to get that plus 1 upgrade to weapons. Scapegoat is finally expanding now. And I'm not sure what Albino can do against this pair of Colossi that are pushing up into his base. Bubble fields are up. Good force field to stop any of those Zealots from pushing up, but I think this expansion is going to fall pretty quickly. In fact, I'm not sure whose force fields those are. It might be the scapegoat was trying to force field to keep those, stalkers, those uh, Zealots up in the base. They do come out now, but the Zealots come over and surround them. And good use of force fields keeping Beaner separated at the moment. Both players force fielding on this round. Both players trying to control the field of play, but these 
Colossi are just doing way too much damage. The Salad giving them vision up here, and that is PG from LL Beaner. 